Howdy, it's Jubal Kane again, and today I'm going to do yet another video on threading. And you say, oh no, not another one. How many videos on threading is it going to make? But this is always a popular subject, and it's just a little bit different twist on this today as I use a carbide uh, threading tool that is already ground and prepared and commercially made. So let's take a look at how I'm going to do that. In my recent videos, uh, 175 and 176 on machinability, go back and look at those if you haven't already, uh, you saw that I was threading with uh, this Shars tool, and I was criticized for that a little bit. Uh, but I would have some foreign tools, uh, those made over the pond, and uh, not ashamed of them, uh, not proud of them either, but this is from Shars, and there's the number. But uh, these are affordable. And here's the inserts. If you were to buy this uh, from Kenna Metal, you would have to take out a second and maybe a third mortgage. So uh, these are affordable. Maybe they're not as good. I don't know because I haven't used uh, the Kenna Metal and the other major brands. But uh, if you're interested, the Shars has a catalog and online website where you can buy this stuff. This is the, uh, the number of the insert. I only bought two of them because those aren't cheap. I think they're ten, twelve, fifteen dollars a pop, but you got three possibilities of uh, you know breaking them off. You got three three tips, so maybe they're three or four dollars each. Perfectly ground at sixty degrees, ready to use. And uh, this particular one, that's my handwriting. There is from uh, anywhere from eight to thirty-eight threads per inch, so it, it will thread in that range. But they make a different size also but that's probably the most popular one that that you would want to use so that's what I'm going to use and kind of compare them with uh, some of the other threading tools that I've done in the past and you can go back and look at my many other videos on that subject also when you look at the dates on the opening page or the title page of my video sometimes you're gonna say well that's an old one or he's got the wrong date often I work several months ahead of time and I keep them in the can till I'm ready to release them so that's why the dates don't always jibe plus since they're gonna be on there for 50 years I guess it doesn't matter that's the thread that I'm going to cut a 9 16 18 national fine unified national fine I had a C on there I had to cross it off and correct it now the major diameter is 0.562 I had no material that size so I, uh, I turned down a piece of 5 eighths um, now the minor diameter is 0.490 I made an undercut that's a little less than that I like to terminate a thread in an undercut and the pitch diameter is 0.526 and that's often the the measurement that we uh, use or the dimension we use is the pitch diameter now why am I threading a hermaphrodite size like that uh, because I have some ring gauges to check it and that's that's the reason for that but it could be any size if you do not have this book and there's different versions of it different editions get one now they're available as reprints for about fifteen dollars on eBay and uh, you can find the old ones if you're a purist and you got to have it but for free you will find it if you do a Google search and it's downloadable as a PDF file I believe so you can do that and just enjoy that for free I believe this is in the public domain because everybody and his brother including Lindsay has copied it however South Bend all the the rights and trademarks are owned by Grizzly Company now but read this chapter on threading if you haven't already but for a lot of you out there this is a uh, old hat now I don't know why it is but uh, everybody wants to learn how to thread but it's something I really don't do very often at all other than when I'm giving a demonstration on it but it is uh, I guess the uh, acid test on whether or not you're a machinist and have mastered the lathe there has been great debate over the years on whether you should set your compound for 29 or 30 degrees now I was taught using this book at 29 degrees so that's kind of what I always do however in this case I'm going to make it 30 degrees just to see if there's any difference and I doubt that there is but many people are debating that and uh, here's a little uh, description here on why y you might want to use uh, 29 degrees try both ways and the thing is that you're feeding in at this angle so that 
all of the cutting takes place on the left hand side of the tool and that there is clearance on the uh, the right side and it's not doing any any cutting and hopefully not any rubbing and I think that the one degree less prevents it from rubbing but I'm gonna go with 30. Here are some of the settings that you have to make on your lathe whether it be a south bend or a closing such as this but run it in back gears at slow speed and I'm gonna be running it a, a little bit less than 100 rpm I may speed it up along the line and uh, the feed reverse lever in this particular place in the down position so that it feeds uh, toward the headstock. Quick change gearbox has been set for in this case 18 threads per inch and I've already done that. There's a sliding gear over on the on the end here that not all lathes have so on this one there's just one tumbler and then this knob and on this machine this is the half nut lever threading lever split nut lever all terms are correct and this is your threading dial and since this is an even number of threads I can catch it on any number or any line doesn't matter you can find all the thread dimensions in the back of different books in machinery's handbook and I particularly like this little machinist practical guide by Morse and uh, there's pages and pages of uh, thread dimensions so get yourself one of those if you can the closing lathe has no feed change lever like a south bend or a closing so there's nothing to do I simply use the, the half nut lever instead of the uh, uh, clutch. Now looking here at the thread chasing dial or the threading dial as it comes around with the lathe uh, running notice that when I catch it on number it's always going to go just a little bit past and that doesn't matter what we're uh, after here is consistency that's just backlash and if I catch it on a line same thing but I do not want to catch it someplace here or the thread will be ruined pretty important stuff this is a 12L14 stock I've turned it down to 9 sixteenths within a thousandth let me show you that there we go and it's ready to thread an undercut to terminate and that's a little bit smaller in diameter than the, the minor diameter which I showed you on the chart rather than using a center gauge like this which I normally do to square the tool up I simply brought the tool and the tool holder up against the face of the chuck to uh, determine that it was perpendicular because you want your tool perpendicular to the work so either method will work I came in until the tool touches the work with the machine on and at that point set the uh, cross feed here to zero and I will return it to zero after each pass after I back it out return the carriage to its uh, home position and then put this back on zero all of the depth will be uh, determined here by feeding in with the compound at 30 degrees until I get to the final depth you know my buddy train man 4602 who made this for me he does a lot of good threading uh, videos and he can be pretty funny too and uh, rather cocky and arrogant as he shows how easy it is to thread and it certainly is for him because he's a master but for uh, some of you out there this is a, a struggle so I'll try to go through it uh, slowly and uh, I'm going to use a little oil out of uh, Dave's uh, oil can there so just regular cutting thread cutting oil is what I'm using now I'll take a light cut and then I'm just going to double check with the thread uh, dial here the thread pitch dial to make sure that uh, the pitch is correct and, uh, and I'm sure it will be so let's get started and this is a noisy machine so I hope you can hear me over its roar of its belts and gears and, and uh, the whine of its powerful motor okay this 
this is my initial cut just to see if I've got 18 threads per inch. When I get to the undercut, I will disengage the feed half nut level there. I will stop it and put this set at 18. Just double check that it fits and it does. speed. It's nice to have that feature, but if you got a south bend, of course you do not. I got a little oil on there, and I'll throw the half nut lever off when I get to the undercut. Right there, back out the cross feed, return the carriage, bring it back into zero, feed the compound in just a little bit, and then get ready to catch it on the line. center now. Now how far am I feeding the compound in each time? About 10 thousandths, although it's going in at an angle, so that's not really how much it's taking off. What a nice chip that's making. Now, how do I know when I'm down to the final depth? Well, it's starting to come to a V. Now, there's many different ways of doing this, and in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, about five or six different ways to, to measure a thread. But for now, and in this video that is coming to a V, I'm going to back the tailstock out and simply use a common nut that you would find at any hardware store for this size and uh, see if it goes on. Now, do not remove the work from the lathe, and some of you are going to be doing it between centers with the dog. Do not remove it. And that's going on fairly nice, but not quite all the way. So I'm going to take another light cut without increasing the depth. And then uh, check it again. Here's one final pass without increasing uh, the depth of cut. Then we'll stop and see if the nut goes on. Looks like nothing is being taken off. I forgot to say, if you are uh, using a uh, a lathe dog and you're cutting between centers of course you got to take it out to check it but just make sure that the tail of the dog always goes back into the same slot on the dog plate should blow that off got a couple chips on there and there we go and it's going on not super tight just a little bit of a wiggle to it so that it'll go on freely The reason that I selected the 9 16 18 hermaphrodite size that I talked about is because I happen to have a set of Go 
green and red no-go gauges in that size and there it is 9 16 18 unified national fine a 2a fit and there it tells the uh, the pitch diameter and let's see if that goes on and it does green means it has to go on and it does back that out these would be used more in industry by a, an inspection department or when they set up a lay these are expensive you're not going to have a set of these I only had this set for a couple months myself I had a, and the red let me show you that also and there's the uh, lower limits there of the uh, pitch diameter and this does not go on and it should not go on if it does there's something the matter you know it just barely starts and that that's it these are highly expensive this is made by Dewall Company. Notice they put wax in there after it's been calibrated. I guess the, the gauging department can calibrate them. Those are made by, well, I don't know what that stands for, a patent, I guess. Okay, success. Some machinists like to file ever so lightly on the top of the threads like this. Well, there it is on the bench. Remember, don't take that out of the, the lathe until it's done. Pretty smooth. Now, this entire thread could be cut in five minutes or less after the setup, as Dave from uh, Trenton, New Jersey uh, often does. Uh, but when you talk about it and uh, stop the machine and everything, it, it takes a, a lot longer. And once you have your final depth set, if you're making many of them, you can do it with uh, great rapidity. And so this is our Char's cutting tool, threading tool. Pretty successful. If you break the tip off, rotate it by uh, one-third and you get a new one. There's the number again, if anybody's interested. And I don't get a kickback from them. I wish I did. I don't know who Reno is. Marked on my Alorus. Everything was used. Most everything I have is used except for, <laughs> for this. Now, let me show you what I have in store for you next. Be sure and watch my next video as I talk exclusively about uh, measuring threads and uh, show you four different ways and, and I already covered uh, the go no gauges but I'll talk a, a little bit about about these again thread triangles which I used to use I'm not crazy about the three wire method the dreaded three wire method very difficult to use unless you got three hands and finally a thread micrometer and these are all used to measure pitch diameter pitch diameter uh, look that up uh, in your little booklets uh, and uh, read up on uh, thread dimensions and uh, pitch diameter, major diameter, minor diameter, what all of those things mean. Pitch diameter being the most important, an imaginary uh, uh, distance halfway between the top and the bottom of the, th of the thread. Okay, I hope you like this video. This is Tubalcane saying so long for now and be sure and watch my many other videos and tell your friends about them and thanks for watching.